see the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Brian, and today is Monday, July 22nd, 2024, and this is episode 746 of the Lost Project podcast, and it's titled A Pile of Shiitake. I'll be chatting about a visit from Carrie Brown out at Delinquent's Gully, underrated cinematic genius and an interesting human reaction, and a little bit more, but first let's check out who's hanging out in the live chat who's hanging over there in the coffee crew grab a cup of coffee hang out for about an hour good morning good morning good morning how is everybody doing this wonderful monday morning rather life got a homemade dog food ad interesting interesting good morning rachel thanks for stopping in appreciate you as always and k bonk in early good morning all good morning to you k bonk hopefully everything is going well um uh, what do we got in the cup this morning? Got a new, got a new bag, fresh bag open. Ah, I guess I opened it yesterday morning. Um, polished through my bag of GSD over the weekend and uh, popped open a new bag yesterday and got to dig into some light Costa Rican. Light Costa Rican from Food Forest Farms is fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. Um, the 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 press I had yesterday sat so well. Um, man, it's, uh, it's just a great, it's a great bean and, uh, Brian does a great job with it. Sent it out in my C4 package. So I'm excited to drink it this week and probably later in the week, we'll get into something else. Good morning, Mike's Homestead. Thanks for stopping in. Appreciate it as always. Um, the light Costa Rican, if you're into coffee, if you're into, um, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> if you're into air roasted coffee, you don't know what air roasted coffee is. Uh, I encourage you to go over and check out foodforestfarms.com. You can find a, a ton of different uh, a different origin beans that Brian works with. Also, some custom blends and blends from from brands um, in his C4 Club. What's C4 Club? It's a monthly coffee club where you uh, you commit to buying two pounds of coffee minimum a month at a fantastic price with free shipping and uh it just gets mailed out to you once a month boom 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 like clockwork there's tons of other benefits you can find out more about that at food forest farms also uh take 10 percent off take 10 percent off with a one-time use coupon lots 10 l-o-t-s-1-0 l-o-t-s-1-0 get you 10 percent off one time or lots 5 l-o-t-s-5 l-o-t-s-5 will get you five percent off Every time, all the time, forever and ever. Um, Brian never put an expiration date on it. So use it, use it, and uh, use it early and use it often, as they say in the voting world. Vote early and vote often. Make your candidate win. Um, yeah, foodforestfarms.com. Check it out. Check it out today. Good morning, Hunter. How are we doing? Thanks for popping in over on Twitch. You are that Twitch. Uh, you are that Twitch anchor over there every day i uh, appreciate that oh rewild their life says found a bag of starbucks in the freezer this stuff is burnt and not great <laughs> i mean that's that's probably a pretty accurate description i would have to say um starbucks always always tasted burnt to me um it's that large batch drum roasting <laughs> That's what it is. It's all that charcoal coming off the outside of the bean. Oh, man. Starbucks, Starbucks, Starbucks. Anyway, guys, I hope you had all had a good weekend and are all rested up for the week coming up. Uh, last full week in July. Last full week in July. Carrie and, Carrie and I were talking this weekend out at Delinquent's Gully and, and um, you know, I have some things that uh, that I was going to get to somebody for a specific purpose. Uh, I'm going to be that that vague about it, but I I thought I had to. Um, I thought I was going to have a. Um, <laughs> I thought I thought I had a bunch of time to do it, and Carrie and I were talking, and I was like, "Oh shit, oh shit." <laughs> It's almost August, guys. It's almost August already, and that means we're getting into fall, and uh, 
yeah, what have you been doing? What have you been doing this year? Hey, your mom, how's you doing over there on the vertical feed? I'm going to find you. What is your name and what state are you from? I, I mean, I'm not really from any state. I'm a South Dakota resident. Let's say that. Let's say that. <laughs> oh, some of the questions, some of the questions. I've also been watching something interesting here on the on the StreamYard feeds this morning. So I have the two feeds up, uh, the vertical feed and the horizontal feed up in one or in two different tabs. Um, and I don't know if you've ever used StreamYard before you get a uh, you get a little notification when the, the signal gets weak. And I've been watching it and they're not the same. So that leads me to believe that the con a lot of uh, not a lot of but some of the connection issues that i've experienced over uh, over the years of using streamyard aren't necessarily on my end um i would think if it's the connection capability of the of my internet signal it would be the same on both sides i, I think it would be the same on both video feeds but for some reason it's uh it's not uh, what will pop up and then, um, hmm, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, anyway, what are we talking about today? Carrie, Carrie Brown visited this weekend. I, uh, I always enjoy Carrie's visits, uh, strongrootsresources.com. If you don't know who Carrie is, you can search him all over the web. Uh, if you've listened to this show for any amount of time, he's, uh, he's both a community member and, uh, and I'm working with him out on at delinquents gully and, uh, yeah. That's what this trip was for. That's what this trip was for, was doing a lot of planning out there and uh, doing some plant ID and also getting some uh, some mushroom logs set up. So I thought I was going to be talking about that. Goof alert. We're talking about eating poop. Great subject. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? <laughs> what? I don't I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh First off, before we before we get rolling on uh, Carrie's visit, um, don't forget to get your SRF tickets, your Self Reliance Festival tickets. Uh, Se Self Reliance Festival coming up beginning in October. Early bird tickets are on sale until August first. So August first price goes up to full price. So you got about a little over a week if you're planning on coming up to the Self Reliance Festival in Camden, Tennessee, beginning of October. Uh, please grab, uh, grab your tickets. I put a link in the video, in the notes, you, excuse me, in the comments. You can also find it in the video description notes and, uh, and click that link, grab your tickets today. You still got a couple months to figure out how to get down to Camden, Tennessee and enjoy the weekend. We got a big old bunch of people coming and, uh, some great speakers on the, on the docket for the weekend. <coughs> And the the number of community members, both this community and all the overlapping communities that we have, that are uh, that are going to be up there in person is going to be great. So, if you have an opportunity and you can get out of town on October, I believe it's the fifth and sixth, um, we're going to have activities going on all week, pretty much. Um, we're going to have some work days out at Delinquents Gully. We are going to have a community kind of get together party barbecue ish event out at delinquent scully on uh, on that friday so we're gonna have work days on wednesday and thursday the second and third uh community get together on the fourth and then self-reliance festival will all be attending uh the fifth and sixth of october so grab your tickets if you uh if you think you want to come up if you if you're not sure ask somebody ask somebody if you uh if you're wondering if it's worth it it is it is and that uh that thing that i've been not able to uh get into my schedule basically it got put behind a bunch of stuff uh is a bunch of interview clips actually that i did at last self-reliance festival with a bunch of the speakers and attendees and uh i was supposed to get them off to nicole to use and uh, mm, fell in the cracks fell in the cracks so hopefully today Excuse me, guys. I got a dog hair in my nose. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Real other life says, "Oh man, someday." Yeah, definitely, definitely. How far is um, how far is Tennessee from where you're at, Rachel? How long of a drive was that? Because you're probably 
I think we're, I think Corey's parents said they were like um, 14 hours. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that, uh, how that equates out to your drive, but it's definitely, it's, it's, it's worth it. It, it. it has been worth it. I can't, I can't speak for the future. You know, I, I, it's always, it's always, um, an interesting thing to, to promote something you enjoy so much when you don't know, you can't predict the future. Um, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. So, um, I, I assume that it's going to be the same as every year and going to be a great community building event. I know the events out at Delinquent Scully are going to be, uh, are going to be fun and, uh, and, and worthwhile because, you know, Tim and I are going to put those together and, uh, and make sure the community grows. So I don't know if you're going to be around, if you're going to be around, definitely check out and get your tickets at a, at a pretty decent discount right now. So until August 1st. Um, so, uh, 12 hours. Okay. That's not bad. That's not horrible. It could be a lot worse. 12 hours is, uh, it, it's, it's manageable at least. Um, so Carrie came out this weekend, uh, got, uh, got his, uh, he had requested some, some hardwood logs be prepped up. Um, or if I had any to do some mushroom plugs while he was here. So we, I got that done on Friday after the show. Um, and then spent the rest of the day kind of getting ready for him to come out and and um, really evaluating what I wanted to talk to him about the make sure the things that I wanted to get kind of get on his board when he was doing his site evaluations. So he's 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 designing um, a lot of the the food forest aspect and the and the nursery aspect of Delinquent Scully. Uh, and then I'm kind of uh, more on the install and maintenance side of it. Uh, Carrie is way more uh, versed and capable in the in the permaculture design space than myself. Um, I have no no problem admitting that. I I have dabbled uh, enough to do it on a personal level. I haven't really done a, a lot of um, a lot of design aspects. Uh, for other people or uh, especially on a project like this size. Um, and it's just delinquent scully is just a different animal um, than what you'd normally be designing. You, you're normally going to be working with people that are on their property. The food forest is going to be in their backyard. It's going to be um, in their backfield or wherever, like right there at the, at the property they're using. Uh, this is kind of a, a different animal for sure. And the fact that we're we're focusing on doing things that we can propagate, we can make money at, we can uh, have saleable items is all uh, is all another twist to it. Um, having a production capability, having a self sustaining production capability for the property. So as we want to develop and and push these guilds across the property, uh, we'll have feedstock in the nursery. So it's, it's a big, it's a big complex kind of project and, uh, and we're having fun doing it for sure. For sure. So, uh, first thing Kerry got down here Saturday afternoon, he had a rough drive. He's coming all the way from Knoxville across, across Tennessee. And, um, yeah, some people decided to drive on the wrong side of the highway. There was just traffic. There was normal Saturday traffic. Um, and, uh, it, it was a long drive. I got a bunch of stuff done while I was out, um, out kind of prepping for him to get here. Good morning, Cormac. Thanks for popping in. Appreciate it. Um, so when he got here, we just kind of went for a walk and then we we're going to go get, uh, go get some dinner with Corey. But, uh, we started walking around and, um, <laughs> man, every time the guy comes out, Every time Carrie comes out to Delinquent Scully, actually pretty much any time I see Carrie, whether it's at Delinquent Scully, at SRF, at, at an event, or even online or one of his lives, I learn something. Um, he's he's a he's a fantastic educator. He's uh, he's very he's very humble about his knowledge for sure. He he definitely doesn't put off an air of um, I know shit. <laughs> And he does uh, unbelievable piles of uh, of knowledge coming out of Kerry. So we started walking around and um, <laughs> he just looks over, 
we were talking, just strolling around, and we're uh, we're looking at the different plants and and um, kind of the different areas and the progress that, that I've made clearing things out since he's been there last. And he's like, "Hey, um, have you seen any? Have you seen any muscadine fruit? Have you seen any grapes on those on those vines?" And I'm like, "What vines?" <laughs> and I, I look up, and the the spot that I had been pretty much walking by every day that I'm out there. It's just the main path uh, to to half of the, the property. There's just huge, huge vines up up on top of the blackberries, the blackberries that I had um, I had been harvesting, I had been looking at um, over and over and over, checking on to make see what was ripe. And um, yeah, there's just huge muscadine vines all over down the path. Uh, turn the corner to go down to the nursery, and they're all over the side of the the path down to there. We poked around a little bit, started to see some fruit. Uh, Carrie was wondering if all the clearing that I've been doing has um, has opened up the light enough to actually get those to fruit. And we did. We we found a bunch of uh, we found a bunch of fruit started. So we'll be it'll be interesting to see what we get out of that. If um, how much. There actually was. We just kind of looked in passing. I'll, I'll probably look in deeper next time I'm out there. I'll uh, I'll take a peek and really and really see how far those vines go. But that was cool. I uh, I was unaware that those were there. Okay, well, Carrie and I had talked about the fact that there was probably several types of wild grapes. Good morning, Jamie. How's it going? Thanks for stopping. Um, Carrie and I had talked previously that there was probably several types of wild grape vine on the property but finding those muscadine and finding actual fruit setting was pretty cool it was pretty cool um we continued exploring we walked down into the the nursery <coughs> area and um kind of talked about what trees could could still come out uh talked about like a a plan going forward with the development and and really I think the idea we're going to build off of is finding or uh, taking that nursery area and establishing different guilds in it. Um, we'll have lots of different uh, sun exposures in the in the nursery once we get the trees down. We'll have we'll have a significant amount of full sun, uh, some some morning sun, some afternoon sun, and then some full shade. So, and then also some different microclimates and um, and growing conditions. Since there is a small creek that runs through it, there's like a low spot that's almost like a, I would almost say like a mini marsh, kind of where the spring, the creek and spring run off and um, and dissipate out into the, out into the bottom, out into this um, kind of like mushy, wetlandish area. It's not very. Um, Rewilder Life was wondering how big the nursery is. I, I'll uh, I'll let you know in a second. This um, this like mushy marshy area it's only probably like a, a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 20 area but it's got all sorts of different wetland um natural plants growing in it so that'll be um interesting to play with we have some uh some like i said some full shade under an enormous tree um but be able to play around with those different different um growing type of growing zones i guess you could call them and then use those to propagate guilds and take the plants that we grow in the nursery and then put them out into the property. Uh, Rewilder Life was wondering how big the nursery is. I think it ended up being like 120. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like an oval, uh, oval egg-ish shape. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of fatter at one end and, and kind of narrows to a, a point a teardrop maybe would be, uh, would be a good definition of the shape, but I think at it's, at it, it's widest, it's about 120 feet and, um, or the longest. And then at the widest point, I would say it's pretty consistently 80 ish, 80 to 90 feet wide. Um, so we could get you know, several different little small areas in there. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's opening up really nice. And that was kind of, we just went to the, uh, I just, when I was clearing, I just kind of went to the natural borders of the area. Um, 
uh, K-Bonk's asking, what's a guild? Um, it's uh, so a guild would be a, a, a group of plants. <laughs> Cormax in the in the um, audience here, I'm sure he has a, a an actual technical definition. Uh, but um, a, a grouping of plants that, that that have a symbiotic relationship and grow together, uh, support each other and benefit each other, um, and and fill all the different layers of the of the grow system. I guess I could I could look up the definition. <laughs> In my understanding, in layman's terms, that's what I would say. Um, Rachel's trying to make a nursery as well. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's it is a decent size. I think, I think um, what we want to use it for to seed the to seed the property with with plants. Uh, we also discussed kind of some spots along the trails that he was identifying that will be able to install uh kind of mini food forests as we as we walk the trails or as um at, at different spots on the trail so as people use the trails as people walk around the trails as people use the campsites or the cabins that we put in there'll be kind of like mini food forests just pockets all around the property as as we navigate it so um and then all of those become saleable items too so kind of the focus on the the plant selection uh, as many as we can we want them to be uh propagatable by you know root cuttings or um, stem cuttings or transplanting and whatever we can do to to be able to propagate and sell that that's the focus of the plant the plant selection so um you know like the comfrey and the elderberries and uh maybe some fodder trees and and there's a list there's a list of um, of possible plants we're looking at that are that are you know desirable um some of them are kind of scarce and expensive to to buy um i those are the kind that i like um if people are looking for them and you can't find them and they're expensive when you do um that's a product i like <laughs> i mean really uh especially if we're if we're doing this long term and then take all that that tiny bits of revenue and and funnel them all together and and, and kind of build it up like i did the comfrey root business so that's uh that's the goal for the nursery and so then we'll we'll also have beautiful food for us little pockets all over this property and then one large main um one large main uh nursery that kind of provides it all and then sells to outside sells outside the property also so Cormac says your guild explanation was great. Woo! Learning by uh, learning by osmosis for sure, for sure. Um, I have great teachers for sure. Uh, Carrie has uh, Carrie has a bunch of books that he's recommended to me that really I need to order and just uh, just start digging into. Um, he showed me a bunch this weekend. I got to get a list together and share it with you guys. But uh, man. He's he is just a wealth of um, in person information, but then resources. The resource lists that he has provided for me are are just phenomenal. So I'm excited to get started on the project. Um, like I said, I got a little bit more clearing to do. He's got a lot of work on his end um, that he's taken on with the design uh, and kind of throwing ideas out there. And then I'll be the the physical labor on this end, but I'm I'm really excited to get installed and stuff and uh, and watch stuff grow. So that's coming up. It was a great visit. And then yesterday uh, we went out to dinner Saturday night, and then he headed back. Uh, he he was able to have power out at the cabin. We um, we uh, K Bong's drinking food for us farms Nicaraguan nice. That's a that's a nice bean too for sure for sure K Bonk I uh, I do like the Nicaraguan, um, so he went back and was able to have power overnight from one of the the all powers power banks that I uh, that I had sent out by by all powers. This one was the R twenty five hundred. It was twenty five hundred watt um, twenty 
25 watt solar generator um just the battery bank side of it it's got like a 1500 watt hour battery i mean it's a big battery so he was able to run a fan and stay cool have some light and a little bit of power there in the cabin so that worked out nice he said it worked flawlessly he says there's also some some odd noises out in uh, at DG <laughs> DG at night. He's like they're probably perfectly normal for the area, but you know when you're staying somewhere new in a cabin in the woods, it uh, there's a lot of stuff that'll wake you up. A lot of stuff, but uh, he said it was good night, and uh, we're excited to get the Corey and I are excited to get out there and stay for the weekends uh, to work to progress more on our project and uh, and the Delinquents Gully project together. Uh, but cut out a, a few days of that uh, drive back and forth time and get a lot more work done if we're actually on site. So that should be coming up in the next weekend or two. We kind of targeted uh, the beginning of August for that. So yeah, that'll be uh, a week and a half from now. It'll be a week and a half from now that uh, we're hoping to be out, be able to stay out and uh, and get a bunch of work done. Uh, so I met up with Cor or I met up with Carrie again yesterday morning uh, for for um for inoculating some mushroom logs so one of the things we're going to uh we're going to grow <coughs> oh i forgot to say what else we found um we also found along with the muscadine vine i had seen uh i had seen this big flush of mushrooms on the the wooden bridge we'd built uh at the last workday if you were out uh, for the last fall workday at Dillon Scully, you saw Dylan and and Carrie build a huge bridge, um, beautiful bridge. It's it's working well uh, out of out of dead fall logs and two by fours, and it, it was a it was a great design. It, it's worked well. Um, I think it'll hold up for a long time. But as you're walking across of it, there was a big flush of mushrooms right in the middle, and I'm not a mushroom. I'm not a mushroom ID genius uh, uh, <laughs> quite yet. Uh, I'm working on that. I'm, I'm trying to get better at it. And, and I had looked at them and thought they looked really familiar. Uh, I was pretty sure I knew what they were, but I knew Carrie was on his way. And Carrie, Carrie's a, a little bit better at mushrooms than I am. And so we were walking across the bridge and Carrie's like, hey, look at that. There's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of oysters. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they are perfect. Perfect. So I had ID'd them properly. Uh, but there was a big flush of oysters right on our bridge. Uh, we didn't do anything to put them there. There is uh, there is a ton of fungal activity on this property. Uh, there's mushrooms everywhere. Uh, and the fact that there were some uh, some edibles already popping up just randomly on our bridge was was a pretty cool thing uh but carrie and i were intent yesterday on inoculating some logs to grow some shiitake mushrooms shiitakes uh from what i understand from carrie's a uh, little bit of a lesson yesterday they're pretty much the the mushroom 101 for for growing um edible mushrooms basically they're the most forgiving um they're the most forgiving to grow uh the process was fairly easy carrie and i knocked out a bunch of them right there yesterday morning uh what what needs to be done the quick and dirty instructions basically you're going to want to find a hardwood tree um freshly cut basically cut and then sat for uh, you know a week to two weeks, a, a week to three weeks. You want it fresh, um, but a little bit dried. You don't want um, you don't want other funguses to have already colonized in it. So fresh, let it dry for a little bit. You're looking for tree or um, logs with a diameter of anywhere from four to ten inches and about two foot long. Uh, you're gonna let those sit, like I said, for about a week to three weeks, somewhere in there. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're going to buy these uh, mushroom plugs uh, is what he, he had. There's there's a couple different ways to do it, but he had plugs from everything. I believe the place was Everything Mushrooms right in uh, in Knoxville. He said that they're a, a small business, a, a family family or small small business that he's watched grow. He says they've actually moved into a larger space. So he feels that, that they're doing okay. Um, but quality products at a, at a fair price. So you can find them. I believe he said everything mushrooms.com. 
he's got a video. We took some video of the process. He's going to put that together and get that out on his uh, on his page. So when it, it pops up, I will be sure to share it. Um, and then I will continue to do the videos of the process that happens beyond this because uh, it's it's kind of a long it's kind of a long process with just a little bit of work in it. Uh, but basically, we took those logs that had sit had sat for uh, about two weeks. It was about a week and a half that they had been cut and and been sitting. And um, the the plugs are basically little wooden dowels with the 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 fungal the fungus on them. Um, so what we did was take a drill bit slightly bigger than the the wooden dowel and drilled holes in the log and they were about every four to six inches and then staggered all the way around the log so we do one two three and then in between and then roll the log and go more and just like rows of uh of holes and you take the little dowel you stick it in the hole you kind of push it in the hole so there's a little recess there and then you take uh cheese wax melt down the cheese wax in a double boiler which uh that's a that's a little bit of a story I'll, I'll hit here in a second you melt down the wax in a double boiler and then seal the holes um this is to keep a little bit of moisture in so they don't dry out and also to kind of uh, protect them and and keep the keep the uh, more fungus from colonizing in those holes good morning john palmer thanks for stopping appreciate it um and so we got those sealed. We got that done. Uh, the process now is we, we stack them up kind of in the traditional A frame, um, A shape log pile, you know, some on the bottom and then uh, like a pyramid. And they sit for, let me get my notes here. I believe it's six weeks, six weeks. They sit in the shade, um, keep them from freezing. With that, that's not a problem uh, here in, in Tennessee right now. Uh, eight weeks, excuse me. So eight weeks, they're going to sit there in the in the A-shaped uh, wood pile. Uh, eight weeks from now, I'm going to take them and um, and move them in into uh, kind of like a log cabin shape. Uh, Carrie described it as a tic-tac-toe shape. So basically two logs this way, and then two logs on top of them this way, and then two more logs, and you build that little tower that way, um, and then let them sit again. So we get them into that A frame or into that log cabin shape, and they're going to sit there for six months. Um, so I'll be taking them out of the 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 pyramid shape pile here in September. Then they're going to sit until March, sometime in March. And when that comes, you basically what they, what they say to do is you need to shock them and then soak them. Um, it's an, it's an odd phenomenon. I haven't looked into it much. I was just talking with Carrie about it yesterday, but basically to, to activate the, the spores, to activate the mushrooms, you take the log and bang it on the ground. <laughs> you just, you take it, um, the, the long way and you, you smack it on the ground. Uh, not sure why or how it works. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm interested to, to look into it and see if I can find the reason why it works. Uh, but you you shock it and then you soak it for 12 to 24 hours. So uh, I have six months to figure out how we're going to accomplish that. What kind of um, what kind of container? What kind of um, what kind of method we're going to use to soak all these these big ass logs? Um, yeah, I got some ideas already, but got six months to figure it out. Basically, you soak them in cold water for 12 to 24 hours and then take them and stack them back up in that log uh, that log cabin pattern. And then they're good. They sit and they 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 flush out mushrooms. They fruit and flush out. Um, Carrie said basically any time the weather cools. Anytime there's a, a, a rise and then and fall in temperature. And the instruction says likely six years. They'll uh, they'll keep fruiting for six years. Kerry says he knows some folks that have been doing these for quite a while. And they've gotten a decade or more out of their logs. 
So I think it really just depends on the conditions, on the logs, on where they are, um, the, the, the climate, the weather conditions it, just over the years. Uh, but yeah, six to 10 years they're, they're sitting there. So it'll be an interesting project. I'm, uh, I'm excited to, to, to work on it with the long cycle that comes with it. I I'm thinking about dabbling in some others, um, Basically, the the 102 version, uh, shiitakes or mushroom 101. Carrie said the 102 version, you can get into doing the same process with some oysters, um, some chicken of the woods, and something else. There was another kind. But since I have all this, all these trees I'm taking down, uh, <coughs> excuse me, all these trees I'm taking down for the clearing of our cabin spot, and they're basically um, all hardwood varieties that I'm, I'm dropping. Uh, there are a couple of softer, uh, softer woods, but um, most of them are hardwood. And these mushroom logs use the, the six, the four to 10 inch, uh, right? Hit that six inch diameter logs. That's kind of up in that slash. Um, the trees on the property are really tall, really straight. Um, and no, no limbs below, you know, 20, 30 feet, um, is where, is where the, the canopy, the limbs start to branch out of these trees and they come off about that size, about that six inch diameter. Um, so knocking a couple of those branches off and cutting two foot logs out of it. Uh, I did the ones, all the stock we used for, for this project out of one limb. Uh, I have plenty. I have plenty that I uh, I plan to hopefully source up some some more plugs of some different varieties and get them all going, and that's going to be one of the one of the uh, one of the spots in the nursery, or off in a shaded area of the property. I'm not really sure yet, but somewhere where we can get to every day. Uh, when they flush out, they flush out quick, and uh, and you're going to want to harvest them and use them. But uh, trying to get some other some other uh, varieties of mushrooms going since that cycle is so long a six month cycle it's it's basically you know like any plant you're going to plant it you're going to let it get established before you're going to see results so like getting trees in the ground or anything like that the 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 quicker you get it in or the sooner you get it in the sooner you'll see benefit from it good morning canadian farmstead i'm late uh good morning <laughs> good morning to you and it's okay you can be a little tardy around here. Um, we accept uh, we accept the the tardy uh, as well as the the punctual. So that's um. Oh, how many logs did we do? We got um, out of the plugs Carrie had, and and that was kind of like a a gifted gifted situation. Uh, he had a customer that did some that had a ton of them left over, and he uh, he used some, and then he had left over, and he brought them for us to use a delinquent's gully um it uh i think we did four full logs and uh and a half log four full logs and a half log i think is what the plugs he had um it's uh i had like 13 logs cut so i already have some if i can if i get some um if i get some soon um Ruwalder life says dried hills up can store vitamin d i bet that's uh i bet that's an auto correct uh lion's mane yeah that was another one of the the ones you can grow on log uh shiitake have the highest amount of course there are medicinal properties to many most wild chaga turkey tail but lion's mane is on my list i think lion's mane was on the the list that um that carry gave me that could be done on logs like this um <laughs> uh, <laughs> lions made oyster chicken of the woods i believe are kind of the 102 level i could be wrong i could be wrong there's so many varieties uh, so i think we got four logs and a little bit more we did some experimenting with um, spacing the plugs. Some we did closer, some we did farther apart. 
um, and we tag those to to determine which one is producing better. Um, oh, rewild their life. Okay, <laughs> she was talking about sun dried with the gills up stores the vitamin D two. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, we'll definitely be doing some preserving. I'm I'm guessing we're not going to be able to consume everything that uh, that comes off that at once um and then we also talked about the fact that um uh, we talked about the fact that that maybe just like chickens starting them um selling them when they're laying eggs the mushroom logs might be a saleable item prep um at different times in the process um just inoculated and sealed um maybe inoculated and uh sealed and then had the their uh their sitting time to where they're ready to be shocked and soaked or possibly right um right after the shock and soak you uh you could sail them and and install them in somebody's place uh, Rewilder Life says, no, you won't. Makes great powdered for burgers, chunk for soup, powder for coffees and drinks. Yeah, that's I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. Um, freeze dried, maybe. Uh, I will, I don't know if we'll have a freeze dryer. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure Sean Mills runs freeze driver off his solar array. So I think he's kind of figured out that. Um, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if... Um, We'll see how much we get and and how that goes, but we're already thinking about different ways to uh, different revenue streams out of this little uh, this little project um, by selling the logs, <laughs> by selling the pre inoculated logs. You know, take take those things that people don't want to do. Uh, they think the idea is great of having mushroom logs in the back, but they don't want to go through the six months of waiting and the and the and the little bit of work that goes into it. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'll go through the process here um, on my own here and pretty quick and and see what it, uh, it what kind of juice and squeeze there is with that. Uh, one issue that we had to overcome and because we're uh, because we're resourceful um, is we needed a double boiler. Uh, so the cheese wax you uh, you might know is that red wax that uh, that they coat cheese in to age it. Uh, Carrie had a block of it. We needed to be able to melt it and get it into the holes to seal them up. Uh, the instructions said use a double boiler or a crock pot. Well, we were out at Delinquent Scully and we were going to just be sitting there. And and so while we were at dinner, Corey's, or, uh, Carrie asked Corey and I, do you have any... Um, do you have any bowls like a double boiler that that you're laying around that, that you're willing to donate because you know once you melt wax in it, it you might as well just use it for that all the time um and Corey thought for a second and she's like hey did you throw away the dog bowls because we had a, a plethora of dog bowls after we had to put walter down um and i did save a bunch i saved some some metal ones and had them stashed under the camper and i said yeah i'll bring them out so we fashioned a little um, a little makeshift double boiler out of two dog bowls. One was a little smaller than the other. One was uh, we used for water and one we used for food. Uh, and they sat inside each other real nice. Um, we used some of those four by four pillar blocks that you'd use for like a, a deck a deck pier. Uh, we had a couple of those laying around, uh, kind of spaced them out, built a little campfire in between set that uh, double boiler on top and was able to melt the wax in uh, in that in that uh, top bowl and then we were trying to figure out how to how to get it to um get it into the mushroom plug holes and uh we just ended up pouring them it is it wasn't the prettiest job that we did probably waste a little bit more than we needed to it ran a little bit but um it uh, it worked. It worked. Uh, they suggested using a syringe. So basically, basically when the wax is wet, you draw it up into the syringe and then bloop, 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 all into the little plugs. 
uh, we didn't have a syringe. We were going to use a straw. We had straw in uh, in Carrie's vehicle. Um, we just ended up pouring it in, and it worked. It worked. It it did the job. It doesn't have to be pretty. The just the function was to seal the hole, and um, and yeah, like I said, keep that moisture in, and and keep other fungus from colonizing in the log. So I'm ex I'm excited. I'm excited to. Um, Real Iron Life says we used a sponge on a wire. Nice, nice. Yeah, they also said you could brush it on with like a little paintbrush. There are a lot of options, but we were in the woods. Um, we were in the woods and and kind of working with what we had. Uh, Canadian Farm says you can get a um, wax dabber from mushroom supply places. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um. I'll be looking at that. I'll be looking at that to trying to get a, a few different varieties out there on the property. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know if Kerry. Uh, I forgot to mention to him that he could he could grab those oysters if he wanted. If he didn't, I'll probably uh, I'll probably grab some and uh, bring them home for Corey the next time I make a visit out to uh, out to the properties. A little later this week, um, getting catch caught up this week from uh, from vacation vacation ish time with uh with Corey's parents last week so i'm uh, i'm spinning my wheels and getting back in the zone office day to day back to uh, uh i have to do an early uh grocery and laundry day tomorrow um usually been doing it on fridays but we skipped last week because we were uh, we were a little busy and uh yeah getting back rolling so i think i'll be out to property probably wednesday through sunday this week and uh get a bunch of shit done, get a bunch of shit done. Um, so that was Carrie's visit. It was great. He, uh, he kind of conversed. He sent me a message after, after, and he was like, um, this is kind of what I'm thinking about the nursery. This is what I know. What do you think about that? And it was basically, if I had to write him, uh, if he had said, Hey, what are, what are your thoughts on it? I would have probably wrote almost exactly what he wrote to me. So, I think we're on the same page. I think we're on the same page. And with someone with his knowledge and uh, someone with my willingness to do the work on the, the other end, I think we'll, uh, we'll hit a home run with this. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm glad to see the way it's progressing. I'm glad to see we're all on the same page and uh, it's going to be fun to watch it develop. Um, let me see what else is on the list here. Oh, <laughs> So Corey and I finished uh, finished Chicago Fire. Well, we finished the the free available seasons on Amazon. I think there's uh, one season that's completed that uh, you need to pay for on Prime. Not going to do that. Uh, the show was good, but it's not good enough for me to pay for it since I won't pay for cable or any anything like that. Um, and then I think there's one currently. I think it's still on. I don't know, really. But I'm pretty sure it's still on. So it'd be like two seasons left. Um, the way it left off, the way the show was kind of going, I it, it was it is what it is. Uh, if they release the, the next season on Prime for free, we might watch it. I don't think I'll be um, keeping tabs on whether it's free or not. It'll be a happen happen upon. It's uh, basically it's our decompress time. Um so we finished that. We finished that. One thing we observed in the last episode or the last uh, couple episodes. Um, so you ever watch a show, you ever watch a TV show or um, videos on the internet or whatever, and you see somebody get horrifically hurt. Maybe they're crushed or uh, limbs cut off or you know and it looks real like they they do a good job it, it looks real um it, it isn't a gory 70s horror film like chop their arm off and a, like a, a line of blood spurts out and there's a fake hand laying on the ground but it looks real um it's it's believable and it just kind of passes you by and you're like well yeah that would that would suck that would suck. Um, and then all of a sudden you see something portrayed that maybe you've experienced. Um, maybe you've, you've, um, you've been in that situation and it actually physically pains you 
Uh, Corey and I both experienced that the other night on Chicago Fire. Uh, they, you know, they show burn victims. They show they show amputees. They show people in car accidents and all sorts of weird, weird situations. Um, and I never really bat an eye. I just kind of watch it. The other night they rolled up to uh, rolled up to a call and it was a little girl and she had her hand over her eye. Um, and she was like, please get it out. Please get it out. Please get it out. And we weren't really sure what it was. And she took her hand off her eye and she had a fishing lure through her eyelid. Um, and I literally cringed. Like it hurt. It tingled up my spine. I, I kind of winced. Um, it gave me a very uneasy, uneasy, uncomfortable feeling. And that was probably one of the, the, the most mild injuries I had seen on that show since the beginning. Um, I think it's because I've had fish hooks lodged in my body. Um, uh, I've had to go to the emergency room to get one removed from my hand. Uh, I felt that pain. And I think seeing it was a, a visceral reaction. I couldn't even control that. That I felt it again. I don't know what it was, but Corey also also kind of wins, and she's like, "Isn't it weird? We we watch all this gory stuff and uh, a fish hook in the eyelid, and we're both squirming in our seats." Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's it it, it might be something that you've actually, if you've actually felt it and dealt with it, it it kind of hits a little different. I don't know. I don't know. But we finished uh, Chicago Fire. We're actually making kind of a big shift in our um, in our lives today. Actually, it was the, the first day. We're kind of over uh, the status quo that we've, we've been rolling through. Uh, Canadian Farm says, says, sharp things around my eyes make me cringe. Yeah, there is that, too. Um we're kind of we're kind of done with the status quo. We're kind of transitioning. We're going to be moving out to the property as soon as we can get the cabin up. We wanted to be more productive, um, so we're shifting the way we do things. So ending Chicago Fire was not a bad thing, uh, but we had this weekend. We had this weekend that we wanted to kind of relax and and roll out of the of the vacation week that Corey had, and so her parents had told us about this show that they watch. Um, they've watched a bunch of shows like kind of throughout the whole thing. Um, the whole series, like the bachelor and the bachelor red, the things like that. And they told us, they watched this show called, um, I'm going to mess it up. I'm pretty sure it's called marriage at first sight. You guys heard of this shit. I hadn't heard of it until they, uh, till they told us. And Corey goes ahead and finds this on prime. And I was out at the property on Saturday and she started watching it. Maybe it was Friday. I don't know. But she started watching it and I came home and she had watched like three or four episodes. And she's like, this is interesting. <laughs> interesting is an interesting word for it. Um, I watched a little bit of this thing. It is the most odd concept I've ever. I don't even know if odds the word I. I. I think this this TV show, the people on it, it, it's absolutely ridiculous. Basically, these people sign up to marry a stranger. Um, they have these so-called experts and matchmakers and all this shit that all the, the, these people fill out these applications and then they match them with someone else to marry them. Um, and they they don't even know each other's names or see each other until they are getting married uh you would think that this would be tough to round people up to um to find to participate in some ass nine activity like this Forty thousand people signed up to be on this show the one season that we were watching Forty thousand people were interested in marrying a random stranger and seeing if it would work or not. Um, the production of this show and the, the creative editing, let's say, um, is horrible. <laughs> K-Bong says 40K, what the fuck? That's what I said. 
I was like, oh, they might have found a couple hundred people and they were able to pick three couples. They were able to, so they only did, they only picked three couples out of the, the 40,000 applicants. But I'm thinking, yeah, maybe they had a couple dozen, uh, maybe a couple hundred people that were willing to, uh, to give this shit a try. And it was only in one city. 40,000 people in the greater Chicago area, I believe, was this season. So it was only one city's worth of people that they took applications for because then they, they were able to do all the filming and all the shit in one spot. Um, Canadian pharmacist says sign number 347 that society is collapsing. Oh, uh, the fact that it's been on like seven years or eight years is another one. This wasn't a one and done series. Um, Corey's parents tell us that uh, they're up to five couples per uh, per season now. They uh, they were they did three couples uh, for a long time, and then they upped it to five couples that they're doing. So this has been going on for multiple years. Um, John Palmer says because do- divorce is easy. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like they get married. They go on a honeymoon. They do all these like uh, little exercises that these experts put them through. And um, at the end of eight weeks, they decide if they want to stay married or get divorced. I'm like, what is going on here? What is what is like? And I listen to them talk. And the way they talk, I'm like, you do realize you're on a show where you didn't meet your fucking wife until you were taking your wedding vows. And just the, the, the things they say, uh, I'm like, oh, come on. Come on. The families uh, are interesting. The reactions from the friends and families when the people are like, yeah, I'm getting married in a couple of weeks. I'm marrying a complete stranger. And the families are like, what? Wait, what? Why? Why? Um, yeah, it's it's it, it's let's just say it's interesting. I would not, I would not uh, give this a, a high recommend. Good morning, Paz. How we doing? Thanks for stopping. Appreciate you. Um, I don't, I wouldn't put this on the recommend list. I don't think. I'm guessing Corey's going to want to keep watching it a little bit. It is, it is slightly entertaining if you take it for what it is. Um, if you look at it as maybe like a sitcom instead of a uh, a, a quote unquote reality show. It can be kind of entertaining. Um, basically, it, it, it confused me and, and made me a little angry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know. It's um, it's something. Canadian Farm says, says 40,000 people want to be on TV. Um, Man, the people that are on there, I don't know if it's as much as being on TV or they're just they're uh, obsessed with being married or they um yeah i don't know i don't know what the psyche is of a people that um that would go in this thing i don't know the 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 switch that flips that goes i need to go on a tv show to find a husband i mean but they they've made an industry out of it the bachelor the bachelorette all this all these shows all revolve around this this weird notion that um we're just i don't know i don't know rewilder life says it's easier than actual dating so weird yeah i mean it is and and people did say that um but the the issues they run into and i'm like weird um you married someone that that you have no idea who they are weird that there's these these issues it's like what is going on what is going on so that's um that's interesting i don't know if we'll uh we'll continue to to go down that road but uh we'll see we'll see we might be uh we'll be watching a lot less uh a lot less prime with our new our new um our new schedule and things that we're doing so We'll see. We'll see if it makes the cut with the the limited time that we're going to have. <laughs> limited time. Um, I guess last thing here. 
Canadian Farm said, do they act surprised that there are issues? Um, a little bit, <laughs> a little more than they should, a little more than they should. Um, uh, it, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that <laughs> you, you have to take into account the people like their, their willingness to go on to this show says a lot about them and their, um, their mental capacity, I guess it's their, um, their outlook on life, their, their, um, <laughs> their intelligence level. I don't know. Like you, you gotta really, you gotta really realize that you're dealing with, uh, with, uh, what you're dealing with when you evaluate their, <laughs> are they surprised? Well, <laughs> They signed up for a show like this, so maybe. <laughs> Canadian Farm says that kind of show makes me welcome the EMP. <laughs> well, if a, a targeted if a targeted nuclear attack could target the area that they were filming in, um, I don't know if we all have to suffer because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> mm. Uh, last on the list here before I take off, uh, Corey and I were watching one of my favorite movies last night. Uh, we skipped the, we skipped the married at first sight and, and hit up a movie that uh, we own on prime. Uh, we owned, uh, on DVD, we owned on prime, uh, Talladega nights, Talladega nights. And, um, uh, I think it's underrated. I know it's a it's a spoof. It's a it's a stupid comedy. Um, it's meant to be. It's meant to be stupid. Um, the the some of the acting and some of the writing in that show, and the subtle jokes and the improvis improvisism, imp <laughs> the improvised lines. Um, if you watch that movie enough, you see these guys are masters. Um, these guys, these guys are very good at what they do. Their comedy is is fantastic. Um, Will Ferrell, I, I I don't think he gets enough credit for for um, because he acts so stupid. Because his comedy is the way it is, um, I don't think he gets enough credit for how good he actually is. Uh, watching that movie and um, and watching those individual characters and how they interact and how they uh, how they play off each other, and then when you find out after the fact that a lot of that was done that the lines weren't written, that these guys came up with these on the fly um and these interactions that way i i just think it's great <laughs> off grid ping off grid ping says i'm gonna be on you like a spider monkey yeah i mean from the kids all the way right up um right up to to will farrell and john c Riley in it um and sasha baron cohen in that movie i didn't realize that bora and talladega nights came out in the same year uh, I knew they were kind of close, but the fact that he played those two characters uh, in the same year is uh, is telling to his versatility. Um, the Michael du Michael Clark Duncan's character, Lucius, the 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 pit crew boss or the pit boss or whatever the hell his name would be, crew chief. He is um, he's one of my favorite characters in the whole movie. Corey, uh, Corey thinks that Molly Shannon, uh, her character is phenomenal. The, the, the race team owner's wife that's always drunk. Uh, she's, she's pretty fantastic, but they all, they all play their own little role. And if you can get over the fact of the movie, just being a stupid comedy and, and appreciate it for what it is, it's a, it's a solid movie. Give it a try. If you've never seen it, um, Temper expectations and turn it on and watch it for what it is. And uh, maybe you'll enjoy it. 
maybe you'll enjoy it. I watch it all the time. If it's it's like one of those things, if we don't know what what we want to watch, we can turn on uh, any of the Will Ferrell movies, uh, Step Brothers or Talladega Nights or things like that. I just I think that they do so well um, making a movie that you can just watch and and laugh and be stupid, um, or or really look at their performances and see what they're doing. So I don't know. Maybe it's uh maybe it's just an odd take for me that uh because I like the movie, but uh we were watching it last night and I was I was just kind of I was half paying attention because I've seen it a hundred hundred thousand times now. That's a little much. Probably I would say I've seen it over a hundred times. Um so I know I don't need to watch it. It's something to have on while we do other shit. I don't know. Uh, or we're, we can have a conversation in the middle of it and, and go right back to it, which we did last night. We started talking about something for a good half an hour and it was like, we didn't miss any of it. Cause we all know, we, we know what's going on, but at some points I was just sitting there and watching them. And I was like, man, that takes some talent. This is this, this, this takes some talent. These guys, um, even though they're playing dumb characters, they're playing a character. That's not their their actual personality. I think we we uh, we look at people that are uh, in these dramatic roles and and give them all these credos, but uh, these guys playing these stupid characters. I don't think Will Ferrell in in his everyday life is like Ricky Bobby. He's he's acting. You know, I don't know. Just a uh, a weird observation. Um, other than that, I don't got much. Uh, like I said, I got an office day today. I got a bunch of videos recorded uh, over the last few days uh, that I got to get edited and up. Uh, Prime Day was was fairly successful, starting to get numbers back from. They did this weird thing this year with Prime Day that if you were using your Amazon credit card, you could get a bunch of money back by delaying shipping for a week. Um, I, it, I mean, it makes sense with the volume of orders they process if they could uh, stave off having to ship them out for a week. I mean, it made sense. So uh, I actually get credit when items ship. So I'm thinking that this week we'll have another big pop of um, of credited sales when the second wave of Amazon shipments uh, roll out. So we will see. We will see. Excited. Uh, I'll have a uh, have that new splitting mall and camping hatchet that's probably showing up out at uh, Jamie's today, I think, is when it's supposed to arrive. And I got some new other products that I'm excited to check out, too. Um, some Cocoa Core products. Uh, one one Cocoa Core like we use for our, our composting toilet currently. And then um, some chips, which is something that I've never seen. Um, so I'm excited to open up the box and uh, and kind of check it out and and give it a go. Uh, believe that the the um, the company, uh, the rep that I've been talking to, said that they use them for um, for mixing into potting soil and things like that to both retain moisture, uh, aid with aeration, um, and keeping uh, and and also uh, anti compaction uh, properties. So. <clears throat> just big chunks of coca core uh coconut husk um in chip form that would get mixed in so we'll see we'll see i uh i looked at the outside of the box and there were some interesting instructions on it so i'll i'll be sure to have to share that in the video when i do the video review um <clears throat> i'm getting out of here guys i got to i got to get wrapped up and get rolling with the day i uh, hope you guys have an awesome beginning to your week I appreciate everybody listening. If you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit the like, share, and subscribe. To return value for value, please consider joining one of the YouTube membership tiers or listening on any value for value platform like Podverse or Fountain.fm. Find me over on Noster in that value for value environment where zaps go flying here and there. And you can watch the show and uh, and participate in value for value in real time. Um <laughs> John Ballers is not the kind to use with the dip. No, I don't think they are eating chips. I think they're growing chips. Um, you don't know what Noster is? Roll down into the video description. Find that Noster onboarding video. Take it a click. Give it a click and uh, find me over there. Shoot me your NPUB. I'll be sure to follow you. And um, 
like I mentioned at the beginning, SRF tickets are early bird special. Um, early bird ticket pricing ends August 1st. So be sure if you want to get in on that early bird pricing, click that link. I put it in the in the comments and it's in the video description right there at the top. Find it, click it, and uh, thanks. I appreciate that. You can find me at thelotsproject.com for more information or get or, uh, comfreyroots.com to grab comfrey roots for your building your comfrey empire. Monday, guys, knock it out of the park. Start the week strong and uh, circle back tomorrow, and we will have a bunch more to talk about. Have a great day. See you then.